Tonight, I came home to the fragrant smell of roses. It only took a few minutes of investigation to find the source of the smell. My bed was covered in a vibrant crimson color that made my heart skip a beat. It was completely hidden under a layer of rose petals. There was a candle on the dresser and its light illuminated the message. I am yours. And you are mine. And I love you. I want to do something that will take your breath away. It was a very romantic gesture. It would have been more romantic had I not been single for the past three years. It would have been more romantic had the message had not been written in crimson as well. Now I smell that iron odor in every corner of my house. And my heart is beating like it is about to rip out of my chest. I can only wonder what they meant by wanting to do something that would take my breath away. A woman berated me on the street today because I was dressed in a soldier's uniform, screaming if I had remembered all the faces of the people I killed. I don't need to remember their faces. I wake up every morning to their pale forms standing over me, riddled with the bullets. I shot through them. I'm leaving you, and I'm taking our child with me. That was my wife's suicide note. Billy had made a wish that his grandfather who'd passed away could be brought back to life. He should have clarified his wish a little more. The man's mouthless screaming coming from the urn in which his ashes resided was unsettling, to say the least. Billy wished on this shooting star that he wouldn't have to go to school ever again. The meteorite granted his wish by smashing into him from orbit. Johnny was having a tough time readjusting to life after the move. They had moved after Steve lost his job. The father knew it was difficult being moved from your home and forced to make new friends in a school. He had gone through it himself when he was young and he empathized, which was why he decided to do something nice for him. He had just lost another one of his baby teeth, and Steve sat down with him and explained how he had talked to the Tooth Fairy and convinced him to increase the price for teeth to five dollars. As Johnny had been such a good boy lately, Johnny's eyes lit up the next morning when he found five dollars under his bed. He excitedly talked about buying a new Game Boy so he could play Pokemon with his friends. Steve told him that five dollars would not be enough. He had meant to discourage him. He planned on giving his son a Game Boy in a few months. When his birthday rolled around, Johnny stuck out his lips and pointed. It was tough seeing him like that, but he didn't have the money for the system yet. Johnny, however, wanted it now, and he had a plan. Steve woke up to a horrible scene the next morning. Johnny was at the kitchen table with pliers in his hand. Blood stained his mouth and the front of his shirt. In front of him were six tiny teeth.
Steve could only watch in shock as his son angled the pliers back towards his mouth and burbled. Through the blood. Just two more and I'll have enough. If you enjoyed this and would like to hear more stories like these, please go to www.youtube.com slash the voice of nightmares. Don't forget to give my video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Also, you can follow me now on social media sites such as Twitter, Mr. Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Wiki, and Instagram. Last but not least, all stories, art, and music are owned by their respective authors. Links are available in the description below.